All right, we got Rafael Laverde. He's going to be give a, giving a talk on, I believe, privacy is dignity. Rafael, take it away. Let's get you up on the stage. Cheers, brother. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, guys. Hey, I wanted to run in here, get the energy going. I say, if you guys want to, you guys want to stay in your seat, you can stay in your seat. But if you guys want to stand up, you can stand up. And we're going to take three deep breaths together. Shake it off. Get this going. Get the energy up, guys, because we're celebrating. Fucking morning. What's up? It's the biggest deal on the planet, hands down. It really is. It really is. So I want you guys to stand up. Stand up with me. We're gonna take, we're gonna take three beautiful breaths for all of the wonderful Monero Foss open source brothers and sisters that are not here with us today. And think about them and send that beautiful breath to them, yeah? Let's do it. One, two, three, go. Push it out. Let's do this. Let's do this. Looking for this shaggy guys. You guys can sit down. That shaggy guy over there, hey, you. You, you right there. Yeah, you with the crypto shirt on. You. I need your keys right now to your home. Because me and my boys are waiting for you in the back, and if you don't give it to us, we're going to hurt you. We're going to get that motorcycle and do whatever we want to it, dude. And you can't do nothing about it. We'll overpower you. Is that okay with you? Guys, look, in the United States, there is this boogeyman that they tell kids about. And, and the boogeyman is um, it's a boogeyman that comes from explaining the reasons for the United States Revolution. And one of the things that they tell kids is, the English used to come into your home. The English would just, like the soldiers would just come into your property and do whatever they wanted in your home. And it's this big boogeyman, and if anything stands out, Anybody who went to school in the U.S. that said is that. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah, I would have gone to war for that, right? Fuckers come in, and my sisters are there, and they need to get our food. They can sleep in my bed, push my parents out of their bed, and do whatever they want in my property. Yeah, man, I'll probably go to war for that. I can see why the United States had a revolution against, at the time, the biggest empire or one of the biggest empires, right? So it's like a, it's a big deal. And this boogeyman is something that kids are told about. And so it's such a big deal, such a big deal that they call it the third amendment. Yeah. Where no soldier, I'm, I'm paraphrasing this here and there, no soldier either in peacetime or wartime is capable. It has the ability to go into your home without the owner's consent. It's a big deal, right? It's a big deal, big deal, big deal. Well, our organize, it turns out that privacy is nothing more, or say, let's say, there's another word for the word privacy. You guys know what that is? Keep going, you wanna hear some more answers? Keep going, privacy, property. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Shelter. It's shelter. It's nothing more, nothing else. Privacy is shelter, guys. So we hear people talk about that privacy on the internet is a bad thing. It's a nefarious thing that you should be like even ashamed of being part of something like Monero. Okay? That's what they'll tell you. I hope this message really gets out because it's as if I was saying that it is wrong for you to have shelter in your home. 
you're in the physical space. Now, how ridiculous would it be if there were people out there right now saying, hey, you know what? It is wrong for people to have shelter and be able to close the door to their house because bad things can happen within shelter. Would that be fucking ridiculous? Okay, well, that's pretty much the same thing we're dealing with on the internet right now. And, and, and I'll break this down for you guys because it's, it's not a far-fetched example. It's actually very real. Very real. It so happens that bad things happen in people's homes too. What types of bad things happen behind closed doors? That's not a reason to tell people you don't deserve the right to have shelter. So we're going to go deep in this conversation because everyone here is like fucking geniuses. I admire you guys so much. You guys, ideas don't understand how honored I am to be here. But I want to I want to dive into this because I think this is something very important for all of us. And then, and so privacy, if you think about it, it's the default state of our personal lives. And it's also not just something that we as human beings have, but it's also our natural state. And it's the natural state of the vast majority of animals in existence. Foxes have dens. Birds have nests. So it's not something out of this world to be seeking shelter from the elements. And here in the privacy space, within the internet, we're not pushing for anything that is outside natural law. It really is that all living things in this planet, in nature, desire their own personal space. Even plants have their own personal space. And you will see that plants even make room for each other, for sunlight. So many times when people talk about the word dignity, they come from a religious, faith-based, collectivist mindset. But in reality, the word dignity comes from nature. It is a natural phenomenon. Every living being that is in the act of being has the capacity to self-fulfill and self-preserve. And that is what we honor as like, wow, dude, like that bird just built that beautiful nest. That is something awe-inspiring. And so one thing we keep hearing on the internet is that, oh, guys, you know what? In this age, privacy is a luxury. It's not. Shelter is not a luxury. Your dignity, the act of you being and seeking your self-preservation as in the form of shelter, it's not a luxury. Could you imagine Mexico City right now where everybody's a homeless person? That's exactly what's happening on the internet right now without privacy. And as in a Mexico City where everybody's homeless and you get hordes of people, the same thing is happening on the internet right now where they're mapping everyone and using putting people against one another. So privacy, like shelter, is nothing more than a natural yearning that we all have. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into the concepts of intimacy and trust because it gets deep. It really gets deep. Our personalities as human beings are shaped by the privacy of our relationships, of our intimate life. Actually, the sharing of privacy is what we call intimacy. And Monero and the privacy community is not doing anything outside of the normal, of the normal human experience. In reality, what we're doing in the privacy space is seeking something very primitive and something very natural that you see all over nature. So it's not something that we're doing outside of the norm because that is exactly what they're trying to tell you. Oh, you should be, you should not do that because, oh, you're outside the norm. No, that is not the norm in nature. So what we're doing here is nothing more, again, than seeking shelter in the digital space. Trust is nothing more than the process of opening up one's 
private life. You can't force trust on someone. You can't do that. Trust is something voluntary. And you have to respect the other person's autonomy in order for trust to emerge. So there's this whole field in philosophy called personalism that I really dig, it, dig, I really dig into because I think it's something that we need in the freedom movement worldwide to get more into because this field of thought is one where you are starting with the individual to derive a form of ethics. People that collectivize and enforce tyranny on others tend to focus on very uh, collectivist worldviews as their starting point for ethics. In reality, it really starts with us. It really starts with us. And one of the most beautiful concepts that I've come across within this study is the concept of incommunicability. Incommunicability regards an, uh, an aspect of yourself as a human person that is, that is something that cannot be experienced by anyone else. It's incommunicable. And that is what it is like to be you. Your experience of yourself is something that no other person on the planet can experience, experiencing you as yourself. And this thing goes, it's so beautiful and so deep because it actually goes into uh, where philosophers and theologians are actually talking about how incommunicability is something that we even have that God cannot possess regarding us, if you believe in God, whatever, because that is something that only you can experience about yourself. Only you can experience you as you. Only you can know what it is like to be yourself as yourself. And that's a very beautiful concept. And we see this in our I, thou, intimate relationships with other people. Think of someone you love. Think of an intimate relationship that you have with someone. And you'll notice like in friendship, that there's something, the more you get to know this person on an intimate level, there's something about this person that is that you can't grasp, you can't encompass. It's something that stands on its own. And and it is there, it is who they are in themselves. And it, it is it is a beautiful thing to think about because notice that in friendship, deep respect of the other person's autonomy is brought into the forefront. The more you love someone, the more you respect their autonomy. And so very important guys to know is that that is why a tyrannical invasion of privacy, it is the, it is the deepest form of aggression against our very essence within our own personhood. So what we see, these uh, personalist philosophers talk about is that you really start becoming a person in relation to other human persons. That is where person personhood births, it becomes. And the beautiful thing is, is that privacy is in fact the starting point of personhood. Okay? Because you need to have something that is yours and uniquely yours to be able to give the other person. Okay? Think about the most intimate of relationships you have, your, your best friend, person you love most, and you'll notice that there's a dynamic of faith, hope, and love within it. You have faith in this person. You hope, in, in other words, you have, you're awaiting a response from this person. You love this person in a waiting for to be loved by this person, to be as the beloved. So this is something that in the digital space right now, we're, what we're seeing is, is that they're depersonalizing us in the digital space right now because it lacks privacy, because it lacks shelter. And that's why we, are ta we, we talk about people on the internet just being consumed by it and being easily driven to have this horde mind mentality of, of, of so much hate. I don't know if you guys within your social circles, if you guys step out of, you know, the like the Monero vibe, Monero social circles, but you'll notice that in our culture throughout the world, there's a lot of division. And it is because we've been depersonalized because the internet itself does not give, grant you that shelter, that starting place. 
we, 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 it's almost as if, again, we were in Mexico City and everybody was homeless. No shelter. That's the internet right now. That's exactly what's happening right now. So this extends to the market. Uh, Ludwig von Mises on human action tells us that private ownership is the means of production in a fundamental, and it is the fundamental institution of the market economy. It is the institution, the presence of which characterizes the market economy as such, where it is absent, there is no question of a market economy. You need to have privacy, to have ownership in order to have a voluntary exchange. And guess what? Monero does both. What's happening in the privacy space and in crypto, that's exactly what we're experiencing. We're experiencing the emergence of shelter on the internet. So one thing that I want to highlight, guys, is that because we... People are being depersonalized right now on the internet. They really are. People are being addicted to their phones at all times. And you know that you, the most beautiful moments of your life will be those where you have privacy. Your first kiss, your first kid, and connecting with your kid, it's going to be that moment of falling in love, right? Um, so right now, guys, what I want you guys to take from my talk really is that here at Monerotopia, we're not just talking about technology, okay? We are talking about a fundamental, one of the fundamental prerequisites that makes us human persons, okay? Privacy is a very natural yearning of human persons. Privacy is a necessity in life for your biological safety and your psychological well-being as well. So I had, I, had, I had a really interesting, very interesting experience where um, I was reading a book. You guys wanna what this book is? Um, I will tell you after my talk. And so I was reading this book and I went to sleep and I, and I, in my, I had a dream where this book came alive and it was like the, 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 um, the letters of the book became, became a forest. And I went into this book, and it was a white and little black forest, and I was walking through this forest within the book. So I'm like, I woke up the next day. I felt like I was in Arnia. I woke up the next day, and I'm like, okay, I, I, I got to go to the forest and take this book with me. I get it. Cool. I went to the forest. I sat down deep in there with my dogs. At the time, I had three dogs. And I was reading, a good hour went by, when all of a sudden, one of my dogs went to sniff, not so like literally from here to where my man is over here on the door, boom, and something jumped up. And I was like, whoa, what is that? And my dogs all ran to it. And it was a baby, a baby deer, it was a little Bambi. And, and I was like, oh shit, I gotta go get it. So I picked it up and the little thing started literally screaming, ma, ma, like a kid. And right away I looked back and the mom was there. Oof. Stand 15 meters away from him, like, oh shit. So I had my book, my water, my every, like, my towel over there. So I put the Bambi down, I bring the dogs, let's go, grab my stuff. And I have this dopey dog, man. And he's kind of, he's dopey. We call him Antifa. He, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't uh, respect private property. He, uh, anyways, he's dopey as heck. Like, like, he, um, he, he, um, taxes other dogs kibble like he's that type of dog right like he redistributes the shoe toys to himself so his this dopey ass dog goes back to bambi right when i'm trying to leave and it's like a, a little hill and i'm like oh shit and bambi's just cute man like just throwing its hoof at, hoofs at him like oh like fighting my and, and and antifa's just looking at him all weird like what are you doing i'm like shit so the mom obviously leaves again further away so i go yeah, Antifa, come here. So, so then, um, yeah, Antifa is horrible. So, so then, uh, so then I, I, I come back. I, I'm like, shit. Now the mom left for her. I gotta pick him back up. What am I gonna do with this baby? She left. She's gone. Ma, ma, again. I drop him off. And then, she comes back even closer this time. Drop her off. Single file. The dogs understood. This thing is mad. So we walked away. 
Oh uh, yeah, I you know Antifa's a good dog, and you know he's a great dog. He, he's just you know I, I he doesn't have good morals. I wouldn't want him to teach children, you know. Anyways, as I was saying, privacy is nothing more than shelter. Okay. Privacy is not a part of our lives, guys. It is our life, and you can think about your home life, your family life. It is the starting point of everything you are and everything that you do. Wherever there is no privacy, there is no honoring of our natural dignity. So, Monero and the privacy tech built around Monero and throughout this whole ecosystem, it is in itself and a digital third amendment. And I'm gonna uh, and I'm gonna reframe the digital third amendment, third amendment, and I want you guys to repeat it after me, yeah? Because it's here to stay. We don't need government, we don't need authority to tell us that we need shelter on the internet. So this is a third digital third amendment. You guys ready? No digital soldier in time of peace. Or in time of war, shall have access to quarter into our private digital life. Without the consent of the owner. Give you guys, give yourselves a hand of applause, guys. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the farmers that made it possible. Use Monero to buy gifts this year. Everyone has coffee drinkers on their list. For a limited time only, get 10% off of three, six, and 12 month gratuitous.org coffee subscriptions. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. These things have to be spoken and brought into reality. And, and that's really what I want to bring to you guys. Because you guys, it's, it's funny to me, man, that like, we don't need government to tell us that we need privacy to protect our privacy. Just privacy by default on the internet. That's all we need. And this is nothing different than building digital homes for people, guys. So when I see all you guys all private and, and like hiding yourselves and like your OPSEC, like I work with a bunch of analysts and they're all like OG Bitcoin, Monero, Denuts. And, and it's funny to me because to me, I see this nothing else than the creating, analyzing, and purchasing of digital real estate. That's all it is. And I can tell you as a digital real estate analyst that I am, that Monero is amazing. It's the best real estate of the digital world of the internet. So it is the best place for shelter, dude. And it's, in my opinion, kind of undervalued right now. Very undervalued, actually. So, you guys in this privacy community, you guys are literally building digital homes for people. For the first time on the internet, you guys are building digital homes, shelter for people, okay? That's all you're doing. So, I, so I, that's how simple this is. You're building digital homes for people, giving them shelter. And then I'm a digital real estate analyst, and I probably run the Crypto Vigilante alongside my co-founders, Ed Bugos, Jeff Berwick, Mr. X, and, this, and all of the awesome analysts, Mr. A, Mr. W, Mr. Y, Mr. P, who may or may not be around you. I make fun of them because, you know, of the same reason I just told you. And so Monero really is a, a place that we literally gave, gave us the inspiration for what we're doing. It's really the adherence to the boss ethos that the Monero community holds to that empowered us to say, you know what, let's, let's echo this even further. Let's use our economic market drivers to 
pushed us even forward by educating people through our research. And at the Crypto Vigilante, we do fundamental analysis, which is we show you the best of digital real estate on the internet. And we give you technical analysis, which is, is that we, we, give, we give you day and day, every day we give you market analysis on how, it's, how the digital real estate on the internet is being priced. And we also do operational security, which we, it's kind of like the better homes and gardens of the internet, right? Like we teach you how to take care of your property. Right? That's literally what we do, operational security, how to take care of your digital real estate on the internet. So again, I see you guys as digital contractors building homes and shelter, digital construction workers, and digital real estate agents. Given the tyrannical proposition of the supposed great reset, the funny thing is, is that if the tyranny gets its way, we might start seeing actual real estate agents like of the physical world go anonymous wouldn't that be fucked up because <laughs> you're not it's they, they supposedly say you own nothing you'll be happy fuck them right but that's literally what if they have their way literally real estate agents might have to go anonymous well, however guys i have good news for you and it is that their plan won't work it won't work because as I explained to you right now, everything that they're planning goes against nature and your most intrinsic sense of self that can never be taken away from you. So ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate Monerotopia. Let's, let's, let's enjoy the rest of the speakers here because you will have privacy, you will have shelter on the internet, and you will be happy. Thank you. So I don't know how long I went for, but I'm, I you know, have 10 minutes for talking. I may have gone a little faster because um, I, I didn't time my talk. I don't know how long I went for. But so um, questions, guys. I'm here to answer whatever you guys want. What's up? Yes, sir. So it's pretty obvious how you feel about Monero is uh, digital cash, but I had questions about other elements of digital real estate privacy as you're discussing and also the reach of the philosophy. So it's kind of a two-parter question. Uh, the first question is which projects, uh, just as an example, like Session, Oxen, Loki Net, um, do you see it as having a bright future for like the messaging side of things or where are some promising smart contracts in your opinion? And then the second question is much more philosophical. I'm sure the first one will be quick, but um, are there any hot tips on uh, reaching people philosophically like you were discussing? Um, when you talk to, you just run into somebody on, I don't know, the bus or whatever, uh, any recommendations for a, a two-minute elevator pitch to try to encourage people to reconsider the value of privacy? So our, the, the main question that I'm, I'm going to answer first is a second question, guys. Look, um, the starting point of philosophy, everyone tells you that philosophy is the science of wisdom. And, and there was a man who I admire very much, Emmanuel Levinas, was also a, a personalist philosopher, and he flipped it on its head. He was a student of, Hus of, of um, Husserl and Heidegger, who became a Nazi, and he lived in Auschwitz. And Levinas says that after he went through all that mindfuck where his thesis director became a Nazi, he realized that in, re in reality, a philosophy, um, if it doesn't start with the individual, it will bulldoze over human persons. And so his, he flipped it on his head. He really said that true philosophy is not the um, love of wisdom, like the Greeks and you know the history of philosophy will teach you, but the wisdom of love. And the starting point of ethics for him is not some sort of argument, but it really is, believe it or not, it's fucking beautiful. It's the human face. The human face is the starting point of ethics for him. So it doesn't matter what you say and what you don't say to someone. What is most important is to have people 
face to face. So we are very much attracted to the, you know, everything's online and, and, and so forth, guys. The best thing you can do is throw a party. Best thing you can do is if you don't, if you're not part of a crypto meetup in your area, start one. Get face to face with people. People are like, like I said, they're depersonalizing people on the internet because there is no shelter on the internet. We're providing the shelter, the first actual real estate. Everybody's homeless. They think they're somewhere, but in reality, it's like Facebook is a giant coliseum with all this bunch of like people think they have a home, but in reality, they're sleeping in tents. That's what Facebook is. Same thing with every big tech company. And they're getting raped and surveilled. And they're within the panopticon at all times. So what the, the, the real answer is meet with them face to face. No matter what it is, man, meet them face to face. So to your first question, which is like, what it, what is what are the networks right now that I think are fucking awesome? Definitely Session. Session is incredible. Um, we love Session. And I know the guy's going to be here, which is awesome. Um, but I really like Darrow, D-E-R-O. Uh, I, and Dero, I think, is a very promising and beautiful project. Unfortunately, I don't think they're here. Uh, Ambo Nerotopia is here. Those guys are fucking private, dude, because I've interacted with them. Like, holy shit, man. I thought Monero was, like, up on their OPSEC. These guys are super fucking private. Dero, I, I'm really into Dero. I'm re I really keep a very close uh, in, in ZK snark development. Um, and it's just zero-knowledge development. And so I, I really like that pirate chain exists and that is implementing a zero knowledge proofs in the form of ZK snarks at the protocol level, which is what we always wanted Zcash to be. So that is something that I fucking, you know, I geek out of. Um, I'm, I'm, I, I've been, that really geeks me out. There's a dude, uh, there's a crew called S script from the unmentionable network that I think people should know about S script. They are working with different forms of zero knowledge at the same time and a very a very cool blockchain just launched about a couple um uh, like no more than six months ago called radiant where you can take all of this like different types of zero knowledge proofs and use them to build games at the same time so you don't have to marry one uh you don't have to marry one uh zero knowledge proof protocol to play with like you would do with like pirate chain or like or, or even like monero because monero in the future will go zero knowledge and more than bulletproofs already right so it's um so it's something that i i think is awesome which is being able to have a playground where that's within a network that's highly interactive like the topology of a blockchain and it really geeks me out to be able to, to have a playground for us to, to play with different types of zero knowledge proofs at the same time that blows my mind so it's uh the ticker symbol is rxd um it just launched i think it's fucking awesome um it really is um taking the big blocker world view of bitcoin's original design to its ultimate level and giving it a fresh new start shop 512 and it's a fixed protocol so you can just build whatever you want i, I think that's that's a cool sandbox to build in because I've seen what has happened within those places and I've seen like recursive zero knowledge proofs being developed and really cool things being developed because you're, you're not, again, it's a playground that you can play with different types of ZK, uh, ZKPs at the same time. Uh, any more questions? Yes, what's up? I wanna see your face, brother. You wearing a mask? Remember, it starts with the face, brother. Well, it's more of a trick of questions, three short questions, if you don't mind. Can I do that? Sure. Okay, sure. Um, you see, you said privacy is a right. Or, sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. There you go. You also said that. But it's not a right. Privacy default state. Default it's just state. our default state. That's who we are. That's how nature is. We all seek shelter. Like it's raining, where are we gonna go? We're here, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Now, um, you want to say something about big tech companies? We all know they do a lot of awful stuff with our private data. Sure. Correct. Yes. Um, and who company made your cell phone? Okay. 
Well, what company made my cell phone? The cell phone, the one where you're reading your strip. Well, I, I have a bunch of cell phones, but yeah, that, that one, one, that one I like the font, so it's, a, it's an Apple, yes. Apple, okay, sure. sure, yeah. Why you didn't bring, write your strip on paper? Because it's a peak of privacy after all. Because, you know, uh, markets specialize and I like, I like the division of labor in the market. Yeah, I like graphene. Graphene's a shit. Yeah, I got I mean, graphene yeah, too. Sure. We all know that there are so many privacy options in cell phone every app, but at the same time, there is a lot of factors in every single computer we have. Okay. So my point is, privacy sure is dignity, but it has to be practical. We have to know how to get privacy so, uh, to, to be something practical in our lives. Awesome. I completely agree. Uh, what's your question? Well, that's my question. So yeah, I know you're you're one hundred percent right, guys. And and the cool thing is, is that like, um, you asked me earlier what what's a network that I like. And look, guys, one of the biggest threats that we have because privacy is really a shield, it's shelter, right? But tyrants will still be doing tyrannical things. So my question is like, what is uh, that we do uh, on the offensive? And I think it's built within even what, um, Satoshi gave us and the start of this whole evolution which is, is that ex extreme capitalism and to be able to build an on-chain economy is necessary. It's not even an option. It's necessary to build an on-chain economy, not a, a, an economy that scales, but to really use the network topology of the blockchain, which is the most interactive graph, and to be able to find networks that scale on layer one to scale on-chain, because that is the only way that we will be able to compete with big tech. There's no other way. So when it comes to privacy, the network that is doing that is Daryl. Again, they're, it's, uh, they're building on-chain a smart contract app, on-chain economy, which is fucking awesome. Yes, you have another uh, question? Then my question is, my last question. Okay. Why Apple? Why Apple? Um, I don't know, dude. I'm not, I'm not an Apple spokesperson. It's just, I like, I like comp I, for example, I'll give you an example, dude. Markets specialize, right? And if you were a tyrant, you would tell the car manufacturers that you need, they need to limit their capitalist uh, productive power. And that's literally what has been happening in crypto. Under the guise of decentralization, this unveiled Marxism has come in that has told people that you and your buddies can get together and build a better product. Because markets in, in itself really do specialize. So imagine telling GM that you can only build 20,000 cars a year. That's literally what they've done in a lot of the crypto space, okay? But in reality, when you uh, unleash the creativity of capitalist production and you allow the market to equilibrate and you stop using the word decentralization as an excuse to have a centralized group of central planners that run and control the base protocol of whatever cryptocurrency it is we're talking about, paying if the shoe fits, wear it. Then we're dealing with a true capitalist meritocracy, which is really, in my opinion, what Satoshi really gave us. So what we need to do is emphasize competition. Extreme free market competition is more important than this stupid buzzword comes from Silicon Valley called decentralization. Decentralization and the vast majority of crypto networks, a lot of people will lie to you and they won't tell you the truth, are run by central planners, okay? That is the unfortunate truth because in the, in the economy, when the future is uncertain, people in crypto have the knee-jerk reaction as engineers, and this is the downside of the engineering mind, is that the engineer wants to control. So when they feel fearful for an uncertain future, the engineer says, I must control the future. I must make sure everything's okay. And they must have, re they could have real good intentions, but that in itself is the starting point of social engineering tyranny. And I love that Derek Bros is coming up next talking about the technocratic state because that's exactly what the fuck can happen even using crypto because central planners under the guise of decentralization will sell you, oh, we're decentralized because we have a lot of nodes, but, at, but who controls the protocol? It's a group of developers. 
competition is more important than decentralization because it is through free market competition that we figure out how many nodes we actually need in the first place. Let them compete. Never limit the productive capacity of capitalists because they are the ones that have the most to lose. Okay. Does Apple respect the privacy of their own end, um, of, their, of their users? Well, does anyone have any other questions? One last question. Yes. I mean, yeah, it is. that's why we need alternatives. Yeah, we need alternatives. But how are we going to have alternatives if in crypto the message is, is that everybody should build their own car? Like, think about it. That's literally what they're telling you. I, I have no problem with this word decentralization. But the thing is, is that the implicit message is that Imagine in the car industry, everyone tells you that you need to build your own car in your own garage. Would I really feel safe in the road with like everybody building their own car? Dude, if you want more, if you want more bits and computational power to be able through the free and open source space to be able to compete with Apple, you need to stop thinking like a Marxist and you need to start embracing capitalism. That's what you really need to do. And you need to allow capitalists to compete with each other and to be as big as they want to be because what is this issue in crypto that implicitly people have a problem with other people being better and more and better than than, than them no dude in a true capitalist economy i can't be better than you and you can out compete me and that's the beautiful thing about what satoshi gave us because satoshi did not give you a perpetual machine for power satoshi gave you like he gave you the opportunity to be the best of yourselves as at your prime, meaning that you're only as good as you were in the last 10 minutes. And after those last 10 minutes, somebody can outcompete you. So no big miner, no miner in, in proof of work can position themselves forever. No business you ever build will ever outcompete the blockchain. Question. Yeah, thank you. So um your speech i heard that you're uh, very pro on decentralization i shared a vision with you um it's a, if it's market driven because right yeah so so uh for example radiant um that blockchain increases with around 250 megabytes per five minutes um which kind of makes it impossible for an ordinary person to run a full node so that makes it not decentralized at all makes it actually very centralized and reliant on huge data centers who store these terabytes of data. So why are you so big on Radiant? So the, the cool thing about Radiant is that it has three types of nodes. Uh, and, and so they solve that problem. They not only have mining nodes, not only do they have personal nodes for you, where you don't have to, you don't have to run the whole blockchain, but you, if you could, if you wanted, but you, it's, you can have a recursive zero knowledge proof with a proof within a proof within a proof. In other words, you can, um, you, you can run off the tail end as well of the blockchain, but there's also agent nodes where if you have a point of settle, you don't have to have the whole blockchain also stored. So it, in other words, the cool thing about Radiance is that it does offer you that option. Like they saw what happened in crypto and they took the best of Ethereum and everything, all the shit storm that happened during the Bitcoin civil war. And they're, starting this all over again. And the reason I like it is because it's a playground where we can we can uh, play with different types of zero knowledge proofs at the same time by building cool apps at the same time. That's why I like it because I don't have to marry myself to just one form of zero knowledge. Thank you. All right, man. Bringing the energy as always. Raphael, let's give it up. Hey, thank you very much. Hey, guys. How about we give Dungus and Nita a, a round of applause for putting this together? Thank you. Because they, they really are fucking awesome, dude. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for putting this together, man. It's beautiful. You know, you know we met Raphael the first time we met Raphael. I hope you don't mind me telling the story. Oh, I'll, not at all. I'll go into great detail. Sure, yeah. It was at the first Monero Con in Denver. Yeah. So Nita and I hosted the Monero after party. We rented a house. And we opened it up to people to come stay at the house. And Raphael was the first guy to hit us up. He's like, yo, I want to, I want to come stay at the house. 100%. And uh, we had an amazing time, right? Was... Yeah. Incredibly <laughs> memorable, beautiful house. Very, And it's a house with a lot of history. So thank you so much for having me, guys. And guys, literally, again, keep it simple. Keep it simple. We talked about people about privacy. It's just building shelter. That's it. In the crypto world, especially in the privacy crypto world, 
You guys are nothing. You guys are just involved in building real estate. That's it. You guys are in a new type of real estate market. That's it. Guys, thank you so much. Good job. Good job, man. Good job as always. Cheers, brother.